So I went to see Detective Pikachu today with a friend of mine, and I'm not going to talk about whether I like the movie or not first, because overall, I didn't have a very good experience. Not because of my friend or because of the movie, but because the people behind me were just completely obnoxious. The thing that I notice the most when I go to a movie and I have a bad experience, it's usually because I went to see a horror movie or a kid's movie. And I've tried so many times to avoid certain situations, like with Pet Cemetery, I went in the morning because I knew if I went in the afternoon or at night, I would get a bunch of stupid teenagers who were there just to be on their phones, just to laugh at the stupid scares, and just to say, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, yeah, out loud at all the creepy moments. And with kids' movies, I've tried to be more strategic, if that makes any sense. Like, when I went to see the Peanuts movie, I tried going at 9 o'clock on a Saturday because what parent in their right mind would let their kids go out at 9 o'clock and then come home at midnight and just be a complete mess? And I learned the hard way that not only was that the case, there, were, there was this family who had twin 5-year-old girls... And the dad did not look happy to be there. I'll let you know there. And even worst of all, there were a group of college kids right behind me who every time there was any applause in the movie, they would do the applause too. And I just sat, I just sat there and went, the fuck is this? Like, come on. And today on the kids side of things, it was a little bit of both. I knew full on that there were going to be kids there. It is a Pokemon movie. And what I did not expect but probably should have was that once we gave the usher our tickets he actually gave us a couple of these trading cards that they were promoting one was like a detective pikachu and the other was a psyduck that was cool it was a lot better than the Yu-Gi-Oh movie i went to when i was a kid and i got one of the crappiest Yu-Gi-Oh cards ever plus i didn't know this did anybody know that it's not cool to be a Yu-Gi-Oh fan anymore i don't understand that like yeah, it was corny and stupid, but at least shit happened. At least shit actually went down on Yu-Gi-Oh! But anyways, what was the problem with the people behind me? Well, there was this one kid who was probably like 10 at the oldest who had to explain to his mom every single time which Pokemon was which, what could they do, what were they supposed to be doing in the scene, and it's just like... <sighs> I understand why kids would do commentary like that when they're watching TV. Kids do that all the time. There's nothing you can do about it. But when you're in a movie theater, the screen tells you to turn your phones off, let the actors do the talking. And to her credit, the mother was telling her, her son, shh, you need to be quiet. And once in a while, he would keep it down. He would whisper at most, which was still a little distracting. But, you know, that's as best as you're going to get. Like any kid who hears something from their parents, they just completely disregard it. He kept going on. I kept hearing things like, oh my god, I'm so scared of what's going to happen. And yeah, I get it. The scenes were dark. The things that were happening were kind of deep and dark. But at the same time, you're in watching a Pokemon movie and you've seen things like this happen in episodes. You know what's going to happen. You know they're going to make it out alive. Kids aren't stupid. They know shit like that going in. But that was just the beginning. The actual guy behind us must have been such a huge Pokemon nerd that he laughed his ass off at some of the most ridiculous things. He laughed at things that weren't even jokes. For example, a black SUV pulls up to the main characters and you're right away thinking this is bad. And Pikachu even flat out says, oh yeah, that is totally a bad guy car. Yeah, it, it was a nice joke, but it wasn't that funny. An evil villain could be giving the most over-the-top smile. <laughs> it's great to have a good time and laugh at the jokes, but if you're that loud and you're that obnoxious about it, you can take people out of the experience whether you're trying to or not. Maybe if I enjoyed the experience as much as he did, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't care the slightest. But the fact that I had different feelings about him, and I'm not going to give away in this video how I felt about the movie. It just, there was nothing to it. Like, 
so what? Dill Pender is in this movie with an American accent. There's nothing to slap your knee over. I don't want to flat out say that this is the worst movie going experience that I've had because Hereditary easily takes the cake. The people that we were sitting with during that movie were fucking idiots. They had absolutely no idea what was supposed to be scary. Which doesn't even make that much sense because there are actors going crazy and what do you do? You laugh at it like it's a Nicolas Cage performance. It's nowhere even close. And I didn't like Hereditary as much as most people seem to, but like it was a good horror movie that had plenty of creepy moments. And to their credit, once in a while they knew when something was scary, but when you had to go, oh, oh, fuck, right out loud, you're distracting everybody around you. I don't care how scared you get, you know what kind of movie you're seeing when you walk in and pay for it. When we were leaving the theater for Hereditary, my best friend who was sitting right beside me just stuck his middle fingers in the air, really not pointing at anyone in particular, but I fell for him. There were so many times that I wanted to just scream, shut the fuck up and watch the fucking movie. And there were so many times where I felt like I should have, because I have actually confronted people over using their cell phones or talking out loud. And there are plenty of times where it worked. When I saw The Foreigner with Jackie Chan, there was a guy who spent like a good 10-15 minutes on his phone. It was shining right in my face in the middle of an important conversation. And I just had it. And I said, excuse me, could you please put away your phone? And without saying anything, he just shook his head like I was threatening him with a gun or something like that. And thank God it worked. I've had people flat out call me an asshole for it. Like, when I went to see Everest, there was a guy taking pictures of the trailers to show his son. I only know that because that was his defense when I said, your light is a distraction, please turn it off. Now, he did it, and he wasn't a complete fuss afterwards, but apparently taking pictures on a giant feeder as opposed to just showing your kids the trailers on YouTube and on your computer... Somehow makes me the bad guy. Hell, I've even had people apologize to me for other people's actions. It Comes at Night for a while was the worst experience I ever had because there were two teenage couples in the same row as me and they were just on their phones talking throughout the entire thing. In fact, one of them before the movie, before the trailers even started, looked at me because I kind of gave them this evil glare because they were acting really stupid and I knew they were going to be a pain in the ass and one of them literally said why is he staring at us like that and they were talking about how you may get kicked out for doing something stupid and the one girl says you know I always get kicked out and I don't get it it's just like well the rest of us do during the trailers I got up twice to tell the usher these people are talking throughout the entire thing and I'm trying to enjoy the trailers didn't do shit and I didn't get up a third time during the actual movie because, you know, chances are they'll see the flaw in something I said. But it didn't completely take away from the experience of the movie because I still at the end enjoyed it and thought it was a refreshing horror take, at least psychologically. But yeah, in the men's room afterwards, the boyfriends, because they were not on their phones and were kind of paying attention, actually walked up to me and apologized for their girlfriend's actions. I didn't hear anything or see anything from them because I'm sure in their minds they still think, you know, fuck him, whatever. But I appreciate it enough to apologize for just giving them the glare every 10 minutes. I don't really regret it, but, you know, it it just seemed like the right thing to say. There's really no point in telling you guys what... The overall message of this video is it's pretty plain simple. Everyone, ever since Chris Stuckman made his videos about annoying audience members, people have been inspired to share their past experiences and basically say the same thing. Movie feeders really should give a shit about people having a good time and not being a distraction to everyone around you at the same time. And feeders like Cineplex and Landmark, while... They overall still have good service. Dealing with annoying customers is probably their weakest element because I've dealt with both feeders and nothing came of it. They didn't do shit about it. I mean, there are screenings where it's sensory friendly, which includes like using your cell phones. 
Take it from me, sensory friendly and using your cell phones during a movie do not mix at all. Using highlightings in the middle of a movie screen does not help at all because you have a less likely chance of actually seeing it. Plus, I know who the sensory friendly screenings are for. And take it from me, darkness with a brightly lit screen is exactly what they need. Things like lights that are still on are going to serve as a huge distraction and it's going to cost a lot more problems for the customers. It bugs me so much that that's the type of thing that you're wasting your money on having screenings for sensory friendly people or for single moms who for whatever reason can't get a sitter instead of bringing your child to the theater. That's always such a ridiculous thing to do. And yet deaf people still can't get open caption screenings, which take it from me, if people can use it on Netflix and not be distracted by it, if people can watch anime and not be distracted by it, you can have open caption screenings and you could serve everybody at the same time. It's ridiculous. Well, guys, thanks for watching yet another rambling rant. I can't believe I've made so many of these videos already. I wonder why I'm wasting my time doing this instead of actually making reviews. I will fix that by having a Detective Pikachu silent review up very shortly, don't get me wrong, but yeah, I have suddenly have this urge to talk again, so I feel like in future videos I am going to alternate between the silent style or either like merging the silent with my voice in order to bring something new to the table. But again, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other reviews at noperfectmovie.com. Stay tuned in the following weeks. I will have a video essay on why movies haven't really been hot this year, but why it still isn't the end of the world. Thank you once again for watching and take care.